When I was a kid, I was so into cars. I had Road and Track, I had Car and Driver, I had Auto Week, I had all that stuff. I had all those magazines and I kept them in boxes and I, they stayed with my mom at her house. And one day she was like, I'm not holding on to this, so come get it. And I thought, what am I gonna do with all this? So I got rid of all of those magazines. But for some reason, and I don't know why, I kept all the ones on the 16 valve. So I put it on a list of all the cars that I'd like to have someday. So fast forward seven years later, I'm looking in the newspaper and I saw this at a dealership out in the Inland Empire. I went down there five hours later, I'm driving away in this thing going, I can't believe I'm driving a Mercedes Benz. I think it's a beautiful car. My wife complains that it's a box. And yes, it is, but it, you know, every car in the 80s was a box. More than anything, it's the engineering and it's kind of like a little race car and it's a hot rod that Mercedes built. And so it's those kinds of things that that's what really appealed to me more so than the looks. My name is Del Necessary. I drive a 1987 Mercedes-Benz 190E 2.3 16. As I understand it, Mercedes-Benz wanted to go rally racing and they were developing a car based on the 190. And so they started developing this car for that and then they couldn't compete. So they had to go someplace else. So they, they got, well, we got the car, we might as well go run it. So German touring car is what they did and they did really well with it. You look at that old footage and it's, it's all 190s and M3s. You can't knock an M3, I mean, it's a great car. I've driven them, they're a lot of fun and all that kind of stuff. But they were definitely a more in-your-face car. This had much more subtle flares on it and all that kind of stuff, and it was all purposeful aerodynamics. It gets those looks like, oh, it's a Mercedes with a body kit. I mean, it was all legit. But that's sort of Mercedes-Benz, too, because at the time they were very staid and luxury, and, and BMW was always, you know, the ultimate driving machine. They made the hot rods and, you know, the fun driving cars. And uh, then all of a sudden this comes along and it's definitely fun. And in the early days they did some big racing, but then they had that terrible accident and then they cut the program, which was a shame because I mean, their cars are supremely engineered. And they had technology in the 50s that was out of control. I would love to be in the room to talk to the engineers that when somebody went, you know what, let's go to those guys Cosworth. The British aren't known for making the most German engineered cars. So the fact that they went to Cosworth and it's got a loosely based Formula One technology, that's cool. My grandfather was a machinist, and my dad worked on cars, and when I was a kid, he had a couple of Aston Martins, and so I really enjoyed those, and we'd go to Aston Martin meets. I grew up around a lot of muscle cars, but then I had this European influence with the Aston Martins and all of that, so I have those memories, and, and so I guess that's why the cars that I have now sort of reflect that. We have a 66 Fastback Mustang. We have a 91 964 Porsche, and we've got an 03 Aston Martin DB7 GT. They're all cars that speak to my wife and I on some level. It's a 2.3 liter four cylinder. It's got a Cosworth head. In US trim, it makes 167 horsepower, which certainly doesn't seem like a lot. It's very much a momentum car. That said, uh, it puts the power down surprisingly well. It helps too because the car is reasonably light. 16 valves were kind of peaky, you know, until they got up on the cam, uh, but it definitely kicks in at about four grand and, and really comes alive. It was one of the early cars with ABS in the US, one of the early cars with an airbag. So it had a lot of this technology that we take for granted today, but then that just wasn't heard of. But it got a lot of attention from the standpoint of that's so not Mercedes Benz. All of the car magazines at the time, definitely what they talked about was the Cosworth head. A regular 190 was about 25,000. This one was pushing 40 new, which was a huge leap. I don't know that the average Mercedes buyer in particular saw the benefits of what this car had to offer. When I got it, it was mostly stock. The previous owner had done some interior things to it and like put a wood kit in and stuff like that. And so I got rid of all of that and I returned it to stock and drove it that way for a while. It was my daily driver for a while because it was all I could afford. But I knew I wanted to like get it off the road as quickly as possible because I knew it was rare and I wanted to keep it that way. The only thing that I've done that's not stock is I put the European Evo wheels on it, but I still have the stock wheels if I need to switch back. The interior, Recaro seats, 
it's funny because back in the day you read these magazine articles and they complain about the gearbox and they talk about how you know it's bulky and I'm kind of like I don't see it. It, it it shifts gears so well I just I think it's just fantastic I like the fact that nobody knows what it is. It's kind of a sleeper, and so I can go unnoticed and I can do it quickly. I like getting out early in the morning, underneath the traffic, take a run up to local mountains and drive, and the car just brings me back. That's what I really enjoy doing, listening to the engine, and to look down the hood and see the three-pointed star. I think back to when I was a kid, and the car really spoke to me, and it still does.